Hi, and welcome to episode 44 of Tales of Yarnia. My name is Hannah, and I'm coming to you from Cheltenham in the UK, which is where I live with my other half, Jimmy, and our yellow Labrador, Jonah. So, I've got quite a lot to show you today. If this is your first time viewing, um, this is a crafty podcast um, all about knitting and crochet, uh, well, a little bit of crochet, spinning, um, embroidery, and dog toys. <laughs> Joda is just on an insane one today. He just won't calm down every time I get him settled, ready to film the podcast. He gets up as soon as I start recording to either have a really loud drink or get the squeaky toys out. So I don't know what to do with him. He's had a walk. We've played with his toys. He just doesn't want me to podcast, I think, is the long and short of it. So if he gets too noisy, I'll have to show him somewhere else. But I think people quite don't tend to mind it because it's part of the unprofessional charm of my podcast, I think. Anyway, um, the sun is in and out today, um, so the light might be changing a little bit. But hopefully you'll be able to see everything all right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so yes, I don't know if I did a proper in the usual introduction. I just sort of went off on a tangent. Okay, so social media wise, you can find me as Yarnia Designs on Instagram and Ravelry. And you can also find my knitting designs on Ravelry under Yarnia Designs. I'll include links to all of that um, just in the description box, uh, along with links to everything that I mention or talk about or show you here on the podcast. So yeah, shall we get into some finished things? Um, actually, I might just quickly show you what I'm wearing. Um, today I'm wearing my Bramble Tea, which is one of my own um, patterns, which is on Ravelry. Um, I designed this last year. It was my first ever garment design and I just felt like wearing it today. Um, I sometimes wear it layered with like cardigan over, um, I, but I do tend to wear it all year round and um, not just in the warmer months because I like to layer up and get the most out of my knits. So um, yeah, I, just in case you're a new viewer, I'll just stand up and show you the detail that's at the bottom, just in case you haven't seen this before. So this is, as I said, the Bramble Tea. It is available on Ravelry and it does now have dog hair on it, but it, the main feature is this lace pattern at the bottom of the tea. It's like quite loose fitting um, and then the arms are just like fairly fitted, but not too tight. And they've also got a little lace design on them too. So yeah, it's a fingering weight design. Um, and I used Travel Knitter. Um, I think it was 100% um, Merino. And I think it might have been the Brambleberry colorway. I can't quite remember. But all the details are on the Ravelry page. So yeah, I just fancied wearing that today. And um, I just really like the colour as well that I knit mine in, so yes. Okay, so on to some things that I've finished. Um, as part of the current make-along that we've got going on, which is the slow down make-along, um, I've been not just focusing on knitting and um, things which have deadlines, but I've also been trying to um, spend some time with some other types of crafts that I enjoy doing, um, just to allow me to really enjoy the sort of pro process of making and um, just to sort of get away from putting pressure on myself to get things finished and deadlines. But I've actually finished a few things um, which I had been 
um, working on for a while. So some long-standing works in progress. Um, I've actually finished a few things um, and they're not knitting related. So the first thing that I've finished, which I'm really excited about, um, is my emblo blur, embroidery? <laughs> embroidery sampler. Um, and this is the first ever embroidery um, sampler that I have done. So this is my first go at embroidery. Let's see if I can show you a little bit closer. So this is a kit which I got. Um, I think I got it for my birthday. Was it last year? I can't quite remember. But I got it as a birthday present for my mum. I think I had asked for um, an embroidery kit. And um, yeah, so it's from Jenny Blair. She does loads of, um, she's based here in the UK and she has so many different um, embroidery designs. And it comes with the hoop and the fabric and all of the threads, embroidery threads that you need, along with um, pictures and in, like written instructions on how to complete each stitch. So this one was perfect for a beginner one. Um, I've forgotten the names of all the different stitches, but I think that was the pistol stitch. I think that was the pistol stitch. Obviously cross stitch. I've done cross stitch before. Um, that thing there, that is a cross stitch. Um, picture which I did a few well quite a few years ago I think I finished it before we moved into this house and we've been here nearly four years now so um, yeah that was quite a long time ago um, it doesn't seem that long ago but it was so um, yeah that was just on Ada fabric I've never done cross stitch on linen um, and I've only ever bought like the full kit where you get the threads that you need and stuff. So I need to, I feel like I need to branch out a little bit more with the embroidery and cross stitch. So I can't remember the names of any of the other stitches here, but it was really, really fun to do. And I really want to get another one now. So um, I'm gonna be definitely looking for another kit to have a go at some more embroidery. I've noticed um, on her website she does um, some kits with um, black fabric and I'm quite interested to get one of those just because it'd be a bit different. <laughs> Sorry, Joe just managed to get hold of his toy that he likes to throw around. <laughs> Jonah! Jonah? Can you come here please? Come on. Jada. Yeah. Come on. Good boy. Well done. Can I have that? Thank you very much. You lie down. Disgusting snake toy. Likes to throw around, but all of his toys are really noisy. I'm also going to take Mr. Broccoli away because he's squeaky. I'm sure you'll find another way to make noise, Jonah, don't worry. Anyway, that is the first thing that I have finished and I'm hoping to add it to this wall, maybe just put it down here-ish, but I don't know how to deal with the back with all of the fabric. So if anyone's got any tips on how to sort of secure it, because I, I would like to display it in the hoop. Um, instead of framing it, I'd like to just have it on the hoop. So if anyone's got any tips on what I should do to display it, or how I should, I don't know, secure it, um, please do let me know, leave a comment um, or message me on Instagram. That'd be really, really helpful. Yes. Okay, so the I've got one more finished object. I was going to show you my spinning, but I might leave that for the sort of spinning segment later on. Because I have finished a spin 
um, I'll show you that a bit later. Um, my next finished object, I can't even remember if it was a whip or not when I last podcast. I think it must have been. I think it was a whip, but I can't remember because it's been a few weeks. Um, but it's a new sock design, which I am planning to release hopefully next week. So uh, the probably the first week in March, hopefully. Um, and they are the drip, drip, drop socks. So it might be getting a little bit blown out, but I've got two socks here. And see the light has just changed, the sun's just gone in. So it might be a bit easier to see them now, to be fair. So this is a design which I've come up with over the last few weeks. And it's now in testing. And I've finished both socks. So we're just sort of waiting to see iron out pattern and um, check that everything goes out okay with the testing. And then I've got to take some photos and do all that stuff. And then we can release the pattern. So the yarn that I've used is the main colorway here is the wool barn. And I believe it's the beachcomber colorway. And it's just so pretty. I really, really love this colorway. It's just so cool. And um, the other colour, the contrast colour which I've used, um, just for the cuff, and it fades in. I don't know if you, if you can tell. Um, this is Sherry Iris, and it's one of the mini skeins. It's a mini skein set that I got. I've just picked out this one colour because I thought it went really well with um, this one. And I just wanted to use it. So the main sort of inspiration behind these socks is um, raindrops and just the rain in general and um, that's why I've called them the drip drip drop socks. I was sort of thinking of um, the song um, in Bambi, um, April showers, but I wasn't going to wait till April to release them so I didn't really want to call them April showers. <laughs> so the drip drip drop socks um, is the name I have come up with. So the grey here sort of represents the clouds and it sort of fades into raindrops coming down here. So it's got these gorgeous, they're not quite bobbles, but you can see they do stick out quite a lot. They are sort of, they're sort of mini bobbles um, or neps, I guess you'd call it. And they're on the front and back of the sock. And then on each side, you've got this, what I thought looked like little um, little raindrops falling. You've got this sort of like little lace motif that just runs along the side of each, um, each side of the sock. So both socks are exactly the same. Um, there's no difference between the left and right. And, um, and I've done an eye of partridge heel which I, I really enjoy the texture of this heel. So I've been including that in a few designs recently, uh, but it's just, it's really fun to knit and I just really enjoy the texture of it. And I thought it went quite well with this design. So yeah, I decided to include that. Um, the sock blockers that I've got these on, were I got them from the knitting shed. I think. I think they were from the knitting shed. Um, so I always get questions about them and they are really lovely. Oh, the bunnies and the little ribbon. It came with this little ribbon on here, which is really nice. So yeah, I got them, picked them up at Unravel, not this year, the previous year. I didn't go to Unravel this year, um, but I'll tell you a bit about life stuff. Um, at the end. So there's a bit of wedding planning going on. <laughs> but not everyone will be interested in that, so I'll talk about that at the end. So yeah, these are the drip drip drop socks. 
I'm really pleased with this design and I really enjoyed knitting them. Just the texture. I'm really, really into texture at the moment and just like the feel, the, just the tactile nature of things. Just the feel of this. It's just so, I don't know, it's just so satisfying to knit up and I just love the feel of them as well. So I'm looking forward to once I can wear them once the pattern's been released because I don't really wear my knits, uh, the designs, um, the samples for them until after the pattern's released, just in case something happens. I don't know. I managed to spill something on one or something like that. So yeah, that's my finished object. Um, I will announce on Instagram when the pattern is live, if you're interested, and there will probably be a discount code as well, um, which I'll announce on Instagram. So yeah, if um, you don't all already follow me over there, I would recommend it um, so that you can find out about things like pattern releases and upcoming designs and just stuff like that. Any updates, they're normally on Instagram. Okay, so those are finished objects. I've got quite a few whips to show you. I've got quite a few things in progress. And I'll go with these first. I've got some just some stripy vanilla socks, which are living in this bag here. Um, this is a lovely bag from Claire. Um, she made it for me and she is Bird Street UK. And she is one half of the dying duo, magnificent dying duo, um, under the Mr. B's yarn. Um, so, Mr. B's Yarn and Bird Street UK. I think they sh the actual shop that they sell everything in is called Bird Street UK on Etsy. Um, but yeah, they are just absolutely wonderful. And Claire makes project bags. Um, I think John does most of the dyeing. And like Claire does have some colorways of hers as well. So um, yes, right. This is quite a long, like a long standing whip that I've had on the go. Um, as you can see, I've got one finished sock and this is just a plain vanilla sock um, using, um, what heel is this? It's by Becky Sorensen, who is Soprano Knits and it's the New Depths heel. Um, and I love using this heel for just a stripy sock because it doesn't interrupt the striping sequence with a gusset and heel flap and um, but it also allows more room than doing an afterthought heel because I've got quite a high instep so yeah I should have put this on a sock blocker really but I decided to put I don't know I just completely forgot I've not really got an excuse <laughs> so one finished sock and I am on the second sock, which is, I'm just about to do the heel. I'm not far off the heel. So that's where I'm up to. <clears throat> oh, and I've got this cute little um, progress keeper on here, which is a sleepy tea bag. <coughs> Sorry. This always happens when I podcast. I never talk this much usually. And um, it always, I always get a froggy throat. So yes, I think this was from Frosted Betty's. Can't remember. I've had it quite a long time now. So I think it was from there. I'm not sure. But I do really love it. I love sleepy tea. <laughs> so yeah. Just about to do the heel. I've not made, made tons of progress on these, but I have been enjoying them and I just really love the striping sequence. Um, I can't remember if I've already said what the yarn is. I don't think I did. The yarn comes in a self-striping ball and it is from Twisted Limone. 
She's based here in the UK and she does absolutely fabulous um, colorways. She does so many different self-striping, but they are quite difficult to get hold of. I think I managed to get this when she did a pre-order. She put up loads of um, died to order um, slots in her Etsy shop for these crazy colorways because I can't remember if this is, it might be a 12 stripe sequence, I can't remember. Yep, it's 12 stripe, can't talk today. It's a 12 stripe sequence. I would definitely recommend getting my hat, getting your hands on some twisted limon at some point if you haven't already. So I will, oh, and I'm using for the heel a different colour. Um, what this is? This was just some leftover, and I believe it is leading men. <clears throat> Sorry. I believe this is Leading Men Fibre Arts in the Upside Down colourway, which is a Stranger Things reference. It's now getting blown out a bit. I like it. I look like I'm on fire. <laughs> Whoa, camera. Okay, I'm no longer on fire. Here we go. The Upside Down colourway. I love it. Okay, so... That's one whip, and I need some tea. I just always really like to have a um, pair of vanilla socks on the go. Just something easy to pick up and put down is uh, the main aim with those. And they're just really cool to wear as well. Right, so next project, living in my homespun house bag. I've shown this quite a few times on the podcast already, so. Let's see. This is my current cowl design, um, which is using two skeins of DK single ply from Paca La Alpaca. I've got the label here. Yeah, here we go. This has been in my stash a couple of years. And the colorway is shabby chic. So I don't know if they stock single ply DK anymore. I had a look on their website and I couldn't see it, but it might just be that they've run out of stock at the moment. So last time I showed this, I think the design was slightly different. I've altered it slightly and ripped out and started again a few times, but I'm now settled on this design. So obviously once it's been washed and blocked and stuff, it will look a bit more like this. But at the moment it's just sort of shrinking in on itself because there's a bit of a rib involved. It was just like pearl stitches in, amongst the lace. So, sorry, the sun has come out again and is determined to disrupt my podcast. <laughs> so I'm aiming for it to be kind of a wrap around twice kind of cowl. Um, and I'm guessing if you just had one skein of DK, you could just do a wrapping around once kind of thing. Cause I've got half, I think I've used about half of one ball at the moment and they are hundred gram balls. So. Yeah, it's just sort of like a nice lace design. And I just thought it'd just be really nice to have something fairly simple to make. And um, yeah, just fairly simple, super squishy, and um, something easy to just chuck on as well. So I have done a provisional cast on, and at the end I'm planning to um, graft the stitches, the live stitches, 
um, together at each end, so it's a continuous loop. And yeah, so that's the update with that. You can sort of see it. Oh, and obviously I've got my um, little progress keeper, the unicorn from Hannah of the Corner of Craft. I think she um, remade some of the unicorns in the same colour with the iridescent beads. I absolutely love it. <laughs> there we go. I do need to work on this. I kept keep getting distracted by things, but I do need to work on this because otherwise it won't be cold anymore by the time I'm <laughs> releasing the design. Okay, so that's another whip. Done. Another sip of tea. Okay. The next thing I'm going to show you is living in my project bag by Hikari Handmade. I absolutely love this project bag. I think this is my current favourite. Just because I just love the feel of the fabric as well. And the, the moody colours on this one. Really, really, really love it. And it's huge. You could fit everything in here. I've got my whole notebook in here. I've got all of the yarn in here and pens and just stuff. I could use it as a handbag if I wanted to. Okay, so living in there here at the moment is a new sweater design. Well, I say new, I have shown this on the podcast before, but it's not yet been released. So I'm going to try and show this to you. And that's back. Kind of difficult to show without it falling off the needles. I think I had that issue last time, but it's quite a bit bigger than last time. Oh no, yep, things are falling off the needles. Okay, hang on. Just gonna rescue that. I think it's just because the needles are so slidey. Because they are higher, higher shafts. And I like the slidiest needles. Anyway, right. I'm going to try and hold the needles together. So, yeah, it's. I can't remember where I was the last time I showed it, but I don't think I'd even. I think it was before this stitch marker. I've moved that since I last showed this. So. Here, this is the front. Oh my gosh. This sweater wants to fight me every time I want to show it. But here. It's good. it's a bottom-up sweater. And it's got just some it's a lacy and textured design, so it's got lacy motifs going up the front on each side of the sweater and then it's got some seed stitch under the sides so that'll be like up to the underarm at the side and then on the back you've got another lace panel and it's all leafy um, lace on the front and the back and yeah, I'm just really enjoying it. I love just going around and around um, with a lot of stockinette, but it's all broken up by a bit of seed stitch here and there and um, the lace designs, which are quite intuitive. I've got them both memorized, um, especially the one on the front is very easily memorizable. Yeah. 
and really, really enjoying it. So I don't know how much further I've got to go. I think I want it to be sort of like a hip length kind of thing. I don't really know. I haven't quite decided. There will be, it's, um, there will be quite a bit of positive ease to this sweater. Possibly a similar amount to this. Probably, yeah, a bit more. I don't know. It'll, this starts out wider than it is here. So it starts out wide and sort of, um, decreases in. Whereas this will be a straight sort of boxy style sweater. So yeah, yeah, probably a bit more ease than this. But yeah, there you go. Well, you can see it a little bit better now. The seam stitched. Yeah, the yarn which I'm using is I'm going to sit down again. Oops. The yarn which I'm using is... Have I got them all down? Yep, I have. It's Woolly Mammoth Fibre Co. Um, here is the ball band. And it is uh, BFL Gotland 4-ply. So it's 75% BFL and 25% Gotland. Um, This is my first time using um, Woolly Mammoth Fibrico, and I really, really love it. It's, Emma's yarn is just absolutely gorgeous. It's all naturally um, hand dyed. I just love it. And when I saw this colorway, I'd been sort of like keeping an eye out for yarn to create this design. And when I saw this colorway, I was like, I need to get that so that I can, it would be perfect for this sweater for what I had in mind. So yeah, really pleased with how this is working up and I'm finding it quite addictive as well. Um, it's not taking me that long to get through because there's, you just sort of want to finish the next repeat. I think each repeat is about 12 rows. Yeah, each, it's a 12 row repeat on both of the lace patterns, so they tie in quite Sorry, that's Jonah, he's brought over his bone. <laughs> so yeah, that's my, oh, there's the yarn. It's really just gorgeous. So, I shall put this back in the bag. And then I've got one more work in progress to show you, which is also a sweater. And it's also living in a bag made by Hikari. So that was that one. Right, Jonah, what are you doing? Lay down, lay down, please. Okay, this is the other sweater size bag, which I have from Hikari. Love it. And in here, is a sweater for Jimmy. So I'm gonna be calling it, I think, the future husband sweater. When I started this, we weren't engaged. <laughs> and by the time I finish it, we might be married. <laughs> so just because it's taking me quite a long time, it's not my primary focus because it's not for me and it's not a design. So. It's something which I'm really enjoying, but um, it's not ooh, getting tangled. It's not my one of my main whips that I pick up every day at the moment. Anyway, I go through phases of which whips I'm working on. At the moment, it's my sweater design and some vanilla socks. I need to get back to the camel though. I do, I really need to. Anyway, we've talked about those. We're talking about this one now. This is the Albion sweater, which is a pattern by Michelle Wong. 
I can't remember if I've shown this before on the podcast. I think I might have done. But it's just gorgeous. I've hopefully made quite a bit of progress since um, I last showed it, if I did show it. It's just gorgeous. Oh yeah, I think I did show it because I remember it getting blown out because it's such a deep, rich blue. Um, it's just so squishy. So the yarn I'm using is Brooklyn Tweed. You're supposed to use Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, I think is the recommended yarn for the pattern because it's a worsted weight sweater. Um, but they didn't have Shelter um, when I went to a yarn story, which is where I went to pick out yarn for this. But they did have, what's it called? Brooklyn Tweed. It's basically the same as Shelter, but um, the fingering weight, oh, Loft, that was it. So it's still a woolen spun. And yeah, here we go. It's Brooklyn Tweed Loft. So it's um, it's Targi Columbia wool. It says, yeah, it's a fingering weight um, on on its own. But if you hold it together, it's worsted. I think so. That was what um, Carmen from A Yarn Story helped me to figure out which um, yarn to use for this. And Jimmy came with me so he could pick out the colour. I think I discussed all this before, but never mind. So yeah, I've got another little beaded stitch marker on here, which is from also from Hannah of the Corner of Craft, and it's a little dragon. So I just wanted to stick that on there. And then I've also got... This slightly rude stitch marker, just to warn you, which is here. And this was <laughs> a gift. <laughs> I will not name and shame again <laughs> who it was that gave it to me. Uh, I did name and shame them on the last podcast, so if you want to know. Yes, I did. Because, so I have shown this before. <laughs> and I nearly got in trouble. Not really. I didn't get in trouble. It's fine. But yeah, so yeah, I thought the man sweater I can have that on. So it's just a really interesting um, knit and pearl texture that makes up this pattern. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It is knit at quite a dense gauge. So I do find it hard on my hands to work on it for too long because I feel like it's, I'm fighting the yarn, but it will be really cozy once it's finished. But it is quite a dense fabric. But hopefully that'll mean it'll be quite hard wearing and uh, the sweater will hopefully last a long time. So yeah, that's where we're up to. I know it doesn't look very big because it's all bunched up on the needles, but I'm going to do that thing where I do stitches again. But it is actually quite, it's a man size sweater. We've like held it up against Jimmy, hopefully it should be good. He doesn't want it to be like too oversized. Um, so hopefully it should be all right. Once I've got a little bit more done, um, I might put it onto some waist yarn and he could try it on. At the moment, it's like a giant belt. <laughs> so I think yeah, at some point we'll transfer it onto some waist yarn and he can try it on. Sorry, I keep standing up today. I don't know why I'm doing that. <laughs> so yeah, that is the last whip which I've got at the moment, apart from the granny stripe crochet blanket, but don't show that every time because half an hour's work does not look like very much. Yeah, each row on the blanket takes me half an hour, so I don't work on it every day. 
I didn't know we've worked on it in the last week. There we go. Uh, okay, so that's it for the knitting. Um, I've got a little spinning to talk about and show you, slash spinning acquisition. Um, so I have a finished spin, <clears throat> which I am really, really pleased with. And that is this. Now it's a skein. <laughs> Um, this started out as some alpaca, silk, and sea cell, which was like, so soft, and it is still really soft, lovely. Um, and it's from Cat and Sparrow, who is based here in the UK. <laughs> I think I picked it up at the last flock that I went to. Um, and. The next flock is in two days' time, so um, it's pretty cool that I've managed to... Well, I did also pick up two other braids of fibre, so, you know, <laughs> still got those to do. <laughs> but, yeah, spinning I find I'm not that quick, so I, need, I tend to sort of take my time a little bit. So, here we go. I've applied it fairly loosely because I didn't want it to become ropey. Um, another lady who was at Flock uh, mentioned to me that she has spun using alpaca before and the fibre when she started spinning was so soft and she said she was really disappointed with the result because um, it ended up quite ropey because um, I think it was either but I don't know, I think it was like the plying was a bit, had a bit more twist than would, would have been, she said would have been recommended for alpaca, I think. So I was conscious when I was plying this, that I didn't over spin. So, and it has ended up still really drapey. This is Claire, Claire of the Bird Street UK and um, Mr. B. Jan. Her test for drape in a skein of yarn is where she does this. <laughs> this is drapey. This is pretty drapey. So pretty pleased with it. And it's still really soft. I just don't know what it will be yet. I didn't enjoy spinning alpaca as much as other yarns, just because it it was quite difficult to manage. Well, I found it more difficult. I don't really know. I just I didn't enjoy it as much. So I don't know if I would spin with alpaca again. I don't know. I really, really, really love the finished product product though. So I don't know. Maybe I will spin with alpaca again. It would have to be a coordinating colour and I'd have to try and get the same weight of yarn. I think this has ended up as a sport weight. I think. I can't remember. I did count the yards before I washed and dried it. And I don't think I've counted it afterwards. Beforehand, it was a sport weight. And I think... Do you lose some yards after washing? I don't know. But yeah, I really, really like it anyway. So whether it becomes a project on its own or with something else, I'm not sure yet. Because I think it would be nice in a shawl or something that you wear next to your skin, something with drape, I think. But yeah, we'll have to see. So yeah, sport weight alpaca silk sea cell is now all spun up. I'm really pleased with it. I just love holding it. <laughs> I am super weird. Okay, so got one spinning acquisition and I saw that Almas who is Witchcrafty Lady on Instagram. 
um, had a little shop update with fiber and I couldn't resist picking this up. It's just I'm going to show this a bit, see if I can double it up and show you. It's just gorgeous. I really, really, really loved spinning um, Almas's fibre on my previous um, braid that I got from her, uh, which was a sort of like pink and yellow, um, it had like really bright spots like this one, but also a lot of undyed sections, which made it go sort of um, really pastel-y, which was really, really nice. And I, I just really enjoyed using the fibre as well. I think it was a Polworth, the previous one, and this one is also Polworth. Um, and it just feels very similar. So I think it's the same base, um, which is really cool, because I really, really enjoyed um, spinning the previous one. It was just a really enjoyable spin and I loved the yarn so much that I had to cast it on straight away and I ended up designing a cowl in it. So, um, which by the way is one of my free patterns on Ravelry. It's the Twinkle and Spark cowl. So yeah, if you want a free cowl pattern, it's already there for you. <laughs> so yeah, I, I really, really love this. Just love the so they, they're sort of like a, a really cool grey and these lovely vibrant blues and purples. I'm so excited. I love it so much. And Almas was so kind and she also included a little um sort of like a mini braid of um Falkland Poldale. It just feels so soft. It's getting blown out a little bit, but it's like a really deep forest green. That's a bit more true to colour there. It's just so soft. So thank you so much, Almas, if you watch this. It, I absolutely love the fibre which you sent me. Oh, and I've saved her card here. Um, yeah, so she is Witchcrafty Lady on Instagram. Her Etsy shop is also called Witchcrafty Lady, and I will include a um, link um, just down below. So, yeah. Super exciting. Okay, so. I think that's pretty much everything that I had to show you. Um, I have also been doing some macrame. Oh no, I have got one little thing. So my friend um, Sophie came round and she is, basically she's really good at macrame. And she came round, she's, been, she's only sort of learned it, I think in the last year. And she offered to come around and teach me how to do macrame. Don't know what the verb is for doing macrame. I'm not sure. But this was the first thing that she got me to make. And I was, it's really, really fun. I really enjoyed it. We had a lovely day. Um, sorry, that's just chewing there. Jenna, it's not time to play, sweetie. It's time to do the lying down. Just do, just lie down. Can you lie down? I'll play with you once we've finished. You have to do the podcast. Lie down. Be. Good boy. Well done. Okay, so here we go. It was just really, really fun. And it, it was surprisingly simple as well. Like I would if you're interested in trying macrame and um sort of are a bit 
I don't know, apprehensive about learning a new craft. There's only sort of two types of knots which you showed me and you can use them all in different ways to create different designs. It was really amazing. Yeah. Oh, so I've just got this hung up on our drinks cabinet over there. And it looks really cool up there. And then she also got me started um, doing a big wall hanging. So I've got that here just in front of me. I'm going to try and show you. So this is just those bits on the ends are just what I've been using to hold it in place whilst I uh, work on it. But yeah, look at this. Isn't it amazing? I mean, I shouldn't really say, <laughs> I don't know that my work is amazing, but I'm just so um, pleased with how it's turning out and it's just really fun to do as well. So I do need to pick this back up again. Um, I don't know if I'm keeping this little plait in there or not yet. I just wanted to see what it would look like. But um, yeah. I'm really, really pleased with how it's going so far. And it's just really relaxing to work on something a bit different. And um, yeah, I'm not following like a design or anything, just sort of making it up as I go. Um, obviously inspired by some, which Sophie showed me. She's done a, um, she did a big wall hanging, um, bigger than this one, which had some similar bits like this, these um, diamonds. So I think I'm gonna have a string of diamonds that go around and everything will sort of meet in the middle, just like this has met in the middle. Um, I think everything's gonna sort of meet in the middle. But yeah, look at how much you need to use. So yeah, I'm really pleased with it. And uh, I just wanted to show you another little crafty rabbit hole, which I've been diving down. <laughs> So yeah, all right, so I'll just pop that down over here. And yeah, I can't remember what else I was meant to tell, talk to you about. Um, oh yeah, well I can just move into life stuff. So obviously I didn't go to Unravel this year, but um, that was partly because um, that weekend I'd organised with my mum to go shopping for wedding dresses so it was really really fun and I've only been, I went, we went to just the one shop which is a really nice um, boutique uh, bridal shop here in Cheltenham uh, called Sarah Elizabeth Bridal um, if anyone is looking for a bridal shop I would recommend them and um, it was just really, really lovely. It was like a really relaxed um, experience because I was a little bit nervous about going to try on dresses um, just in case I couldn't find anything that was the right thing for me and like what I had in mind. But um, yeah, Sarah was really, really helpful. And I did find my dress, so it's really exciting. And yeah. It's just really, really fun. So that's another big wedding thing, sort of sorted. Well, obviously you've got to go back for fittings and get bits sorted and I've got to find shoes now. Um, but it's another sort of thing that's in progress and another thing sort of ticked off the list. So yeah, we've um, done quite a bit wedding wise. We also went for that scary interview that you have to go to at the registry office as sort of like your notice of stuff. So um, notice like to get married. So um, that was another thing. And what else? We've got meetings with caterers and coming up just to sort of figure out the menu. Got to figure out florist, some sort of cake person. Um, 
bridesmaids dresses, figuring those out at the moment. But yeah, things are going okay, I think. Got to figure out Jimmy's outfit as well. But yeah, it's all going well. So considering we've not given ourselves like that long really to plan it, um, I feel like we got quite a lot done at once at, at the, near the start of the planning. So yeah, I think everything else will hopefully just fall into place. I'm not really that bothered about the little details about the wedding and just sort of want to get the wedding done. Cause it's just, yeah, I'm sort of, it's just one day. Um, I'm not like overly concerned about anything going wrong. I don't know, it's just, it's not really that much to worry about with just one day, I think. Well, we'll see how I feel nearer the time if um, I've got to be sorting things out. Yeah, we'll see. But yeah, I don't feel like I'm that fussed about how things look or what, like having a particular type of flower or anything like that. I don't really know. So um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, other life stuff. Really no. I've not really been doing that much. Um, I'm going to flock on Saturday. So I don't know what day this will be posted, but the day I'm filming, it is Thursday. So in two days is flock. Um, so if you are able to um, get to Bristol, like if that's a reasonable distance for you to travel, I would definitely recommend um, going. I think you do need to just let Claire know that you will be attending just so that they have an idea of numbers. Um, so yeah, but I don't think it would be too late, probably. I don't know. Um, but yeah, if you want to find out more information about it, um, I would check out Claire, who is Bird Street UK, her thing on Instagram, and um, also Mr. Bees Yarn. They are the organisers of Flock. Um, it's a meetup four times a year. All of their yarn will be there, and I think I'll be helping in the shop again. So um, that's really fun, getting to pretend I've got a shop. <laughs> that's just really fun, um, and getting to like, I, all of the yarn. It's, it's difficult to just not come home with everything. It's, uh, they just have amazing colorways. Um, but each time they also have a guest vendor. And this time it is Skein Heroin. So I'm really excited to see her yarn. Um, I think hers are, I think she specializes in natural dyeing. Um, so I'm really, really interested to see her colorways in person and um, the different bases that she does as well. So yeah. Um, really, really looking forward to it. Also taking my friend Wendy along this time, so that will be fun. It'll be her first flock. <laughs> but yeah, it should be really, really fun. It's always just a really nice, relaxed, friendly atmosphere there, so hopefully we will have a nice time again. So yeah, if you are coming to flock, I look forward to seeing you there. And I don't know how to end this podcast this week, this week, this time. I now just feel quite tired <laughs> just because I've talked so much. But um, yeah, I hope you all have a lovely couple of weeks until I speak to you again soon. And yeah, if you enjoyed my video, please do like the video. Um, it just helps other people um, find out about my podcast and um, get to see it. It's just a cool way of helping to support my podcast um, without having to spend any money. So yeah, please do like the video if you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to be notified of future episodes, please also do subscribe and um, you can click the little 
notification bell icon and then you will get notified when I post a new episode. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed it. It was really lovely to chat to you and um, yeah, I will speak to you all again in a few weeks. Bye!